Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and it's really been a few months, hasn't it? In this week's video, we'll be covering how to create a sci-fi interior in Blender and render it out as a panorama as part of a collaboration with Clip Studio Paint. In their video, we'll be covering how to import that panorama into Clip Studio Paint and how it can be useful in a number of ways, whether that be concept art, comic or storyboard art, or just a rendered illustration. Links should be in the description or a pinned comment below. All right, let's get started. Before starting, I need to make sure the room is to scale. That way, when we import the panorama into Clip Studio Paint, we can set the camera height to 1.3 meters and the perspective grid will match up perfectly, allowing us to easily add in figures that follows the same perspective as our rendered panorama. We won't be covering that part in this video though. So how do you make things to scale, you ask? I always like using the default cube as a reference guide. The cube is about two meters when loading it in, so you can just use that as a measurement. Or you can bring in a human scale. Or another way to measure things in Blender is to use the measure tool on the tool panel to the left. If you aren't seeing it, just press T for tool. Hovering over it will give you some keyboard shortcuts. Just make sure you're in orthographic mode to get the most accurate results. So first step in designing any interior is to figure out the floor plan. Using some planes, I just basically mapped out the floor quickly. On my second monitor, I had actually gathered some sci-fi interior references, which will come in handy once I start fleshing out the interior, as in like adding assets and so on. He still served a purpose in the floor planning as I was kind of making mental notes of where I wanted the entrance to be and I also wanted a little bed situation, a ladder going up or down to another room and so on. You'll see me changing my mind quite a bit later on but that's just all part of the process. A big selling point of the room is the bed and I decided to model this entirely on my own. Throughout the video, you'll see me combine methods where I custom model things and use some Sketchfab assets that I modify to kind of fit the overall aesthetic. As the title states, this room will be a 70s retrofuturistic inspired interior. Ooh, that's long. And I also wanted it to kind of have a somewhat military feel to it. So to achieve that, I want to make everything feel very bulky and sturdy much like how in the military things aren't really designed to kind of look nice, but to be practical, meaning they often end up looking very bulky as a byproduct. You'll see obvious vents, bolts, pipes, and so on. The palette later on will also help with the 70s and military feeling, but yeah, that's, we'll save that for later on. Using the reference I had up on my monitor, I wanted to have this corrugated window panel that can be lifted up using a handle which I will add in later on. I want this bed area to kind of feel like a sort of safe space, a little cave to kind of retreat back into almost. On both the bed frame and the wall, I wanted to kind of have knickknacks and posters, notes, pictures, and so on. This is the typical things we see in a lot of movies or games, but it like, it generally makes the bed feel more lived in. Like an actual person sleeps here who likes being surrounded by memories and photographs of loved ones and so on. Space can be isolating, you know? I mean, I say that as if I've been there. <laughs> anyway. Using my beloved booleans, control numpad minus if you've forgotten, I cut out some holes for the ceiling light on the bed and some of the outer frame to kind of give the bed a bit more of a unique feel. You can see that I've also brought in a human scale just to make sure that everything looks right. And finally, some Sketchfab action. If you're unaware, Sketchfab has a brilliant add-on which allows you to freely use free models in your work as long as you aren't reselling the assets directly. That's a huge no-no. But yeah, using the free add-on, I just start kitbashing a bit, separating parts and using only what I need. I absolutely love kit bashing. It speeds up the process tremendously. I actually decided to replace my placeholder rectangle mattress with a way more realistic mattress that I found on Sketchfab. Sometimes you bring in an asset and it has a lot of empties, which are these little plus signs. 
So to get rid of them and to clean up your outliner, you can right click on the main group of assets, go to select hierarchy and shift select on one part of the model. Then with control J for join, you can join all of the assets together and with alt P for parent, you can clear parent and keep the transformation. Now all of these empties will be separated from the mesh and you can shift select and delete them in the outliner. Isn't that just so much cleaner? Here's the fun part. So I found this sci-fi hatch which looked really cool, but I noticed that it was actually just a plane with a texture on it. So time to work some Ian Hubert magic and turn this textured plane into a three-dimensional asset. I actually covered this method of working in a previous side quest episode where I designed a retrofuturistic matter detector. So if you're interested in learning about this workflow, head over to that video. And yes, I am obsessed with retrofuturism. I just can't help myself. In order to see the textures of the asset, I had to turn on material preview mode. And basically using the knife tool, I cut out various shapes and extruded them until I got a result I liked. Sometimes when you do this, some areas stretch pretty badly, so you'll have to select that area and reproject it using U and unwrap. And there we go. I tweak the material slightly to make it look a bit more metallic and reflective. And that's it basically done. I'll just time lapse for a bit now while I continue to flesh out the room. Somehow my booleans got misplaced accidentally, so I had to move them back into place. And even though this is perhaps too early in the process, I just wanted to flesh out the bed area some more and work on the overall palette to kind of make sure that all of the assets when put together would feel cohesive. If you leave the texturing work until the very last moment, things might feel out of place, like it doesn't all belong together. So I like to add in just a splash of color to kind of make sure I'm headed in the right direction and kind of communicating military and retrofuturistic 70s with this interior. In that sense, I'm almost working as more of a concept artist rather than a traditional 3D artist where you basically flesh out all of the models first, then tackle the texturing. But they often have concept art to work from, whereas I'm kind of just pulling out ideas out of nothing, so I kind of have to figure things out on the go. I mean, I find that super fun, but some people need a bit more guidance, which is totally fine. In any case, you should always use references to draw inspiration from. Anyway, the textures that I use are from textures.com and they have some great sci-fi materials where you basically just download the textures you need and plug them into a principled BSDF. And using the unwrap method in the previously mentioned side quest video, I basically just try to unwrap surfaces and line them up on the UV grid to kind of get a nice result. This way you can actually end up with a lot of happy accidents. And you don't have to be restricted to just one texture or material per model. You can add several and by selecting surfaces and under material properties hit assign onto a newly created material. That part of the model gets the material assigned to it. Just make sure that under the image dropdown you actually find the texture file that you've used for that particular material and you basically just move the UV unwrap to an area that looks nice. And even if you're working on a model that's not connected, you can still use the same materials you've created and just repeat the whole process for that model. Here you can see me taking advantage of the happy little accident and using the knife tool and pop out those really nice grids. This is more of a destructive way of working, so just make sure that you want to commit to this change before extruding anything. And finally, some floor action. That sounded way dirtier than it had to. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, you can totally size up the UV unwrap beyond the UV grid, but be aware that if you're thinking of importing this into another software, this might cause issues. But if you're working primarily in Blender and you'll render the shot in Blender, then this should be fine. I thought it was about time I brought in an HDRI, so using HDRI Haven, which you can download free HDRIs from, 
I found this Norwegian Rukan interior, which I thought fit nicely. I'm actually from Norway myself, so that was a funny little coincidence. Curtis Holt, who has a brilliant YouTube channel covering Blender specific tips and workflows, has a great startup file that I like to use. So if you're interested in this handy little HDRI setup, go check out his Gumroad and his video detailing what the startup file includes. Some of the stuff in the startup file I'm not really a fan of, so if you want only the HDRI setup, copy it, paste it into an empty project, and go to File, Defaults, and Save Startup File. Using the HDRI setup, you can just load in the image, and using these handy little adjustments, you can easily edit the HDRI to your liking. I want the scene to be fairly dark and dramatic, so I lowered down the strength of the HDRI light. After adding some texture to the walls, I decided to edit the screen of this little panel. I'll add in a texture later on, but for now I just use an emissive material to get a nice green glow. I don't know what it is about dark rooms and green glowing screens, but it just always feels more retrofuturistic to me. Here you can see me actually changing the material of the console to match the wall and floor texture. And added that same green emissive screen to make everything feel more cohesive. I also added some point lights to have that green light kind of spill out into the room. I also repeated some of the diagonal orange stripes which I used on the floor just to add a bit more design to the console although I know it doesn't really make much sense. Everything is starting to come together now. I put this away for a day and upon looking at the scene the next day I wasn't super happy with the walls. They were a bit too bland and lacked detail and personality. So I kind of added in some panels here and there to kind of break up the monotony. And the ladder is finally being incorporated. I mentioned in the beginning of the video that I wanted this little hatch in the room and I decided I wanted it to be the only way to kind of enter and exit the room. And unless you're a parkour fan, parkour! a ladder is maybe a smart bet. I also added a little ceiling because it's cycles time. I mean, we're not done yet, but I was generally curious to see how it all looked in cycles, since we'll need cycles to render out a panorama image. Unfortunately, you can't use Eevee to render out a panorama, but I mean, who knows, maybe they'll change that in the future. I added a little boolean cutout for the ladder and an ominous red light coming from above. And yeah, it looks super moody, I love it. The colors work super well together. Now comes the fun part. So most of the mood, floor plan and palette is kind of already fleshed out. So the only thing left is set dressing. I find this part really fun to do. Just put on a good podcast or music. I mean, my recent obsession has been Dungeons and Daddies, which is a hilarious D&D podcast, not sponsored. And you can just basically find assets to match the aesthetic of your scene. I like to mix assets together, like how I added a screen to this terminal. I also thought a window would make a lot of logical sense and would communicate space better than anything. So I found a nice little space backdrop from Unsplash, which offers really high quality CC0 images that I tend to use for a lot of my backgrounds in my 3D renders. I slapped on a hue, saturation and value node and adjusted the image to my liking. I wasn't really sure if I should go for like a red palette or a purple one. Ultimately, I settled on a pink slash purple as it works really nicely with the green screens. Once I added in this lighting, I realized that the lower half of the walls would look really cool with some orange splashed on it. So I duplicated the material added yellow to the end of the name, even though I later changed this to orange, and assigned this new material to the walls. Since this is a duplicate, nothing has changed, but if you add a color ramp before the base color input, you can basically edit those colors easily. So the brightest part of the texture will be colored by orange, and the darkest part will be colored by black. You can of course tweak these sliders as much as you want. 
And once the material is created, you can go and select other panels that had that previous uncolored material assigned to it and basically just reassign the new colored material. Since I've finished placing the bigger meshes in the scene, it's time to add in smaller details like a blanket where I use the Simply Cloth Pro add-on for easy cloth simulation. If you're interested in the add-on, please check out the description and pin comment for a link. Otherwise, I've covered using this add-on in quite a few quick tips videos, so definitely check those out. I find cloth sim to be so satisfying to watch. It took me a bit of trial and error, but I eventually found something that worked. Time to scatter some books, add in some pipes, pillows, give the blanket a nice 70s type texture, add in some posters and general wall art, some smaller details, and there we go. Switching on cycles is so satisfying. It all just looks so cool together. Okay, time for this to become a panorama shot. In the middle of your scene, add in a camera and line it up so that it's facing forward at 90 degrees, which can be done in the item panel under rotation. Then clicking onto your camera settings, you need to set the shot to panoramic and the panorama type to equirectangular. And of course, the render engine has to be set to cycles instead of EV. If your GPU is more powerful, I definitely recommend using that to render your scene, or else just switch to your CPU. Then set your amount of samples under render properties. In my case, I set it to 4096, and you can choose to add a bit of denoising, which is basically a generated method of detecting noise and trying to eliminate it through internal calculations. Sometimes that ends up giving you a blurry image, so use that if you want to. I personally don't mind a bit of grain, especially since this is a futuristic interior after all. So it's all up to you really. Last step is to set the render resolution, which I leave at a default of 1920 by 1080 and just basically use the percentage multiplier to either double, triple or quadruple the overall render resolution. If you're using it in a scene like in our Clip Studio Paint video, You'll want to up it up a bit since we'll be zooming in on it a lot. Although a lower resolution will result with more performance, which I think is what Omerjan went for in the end. Either way, make sure you save first in case of any crashes and hit F12 or render and render image and just go get yourself a nice cup of coffee or tea. This process might take a while, so patience is key. If you have a less performant GPU or CPU, just make sure the resolution is set lower as the render might crash your computer. And there we go, our render is completed. I am very happy with how it turned out. I always love a good excuse to create something retrofuturistic. I probably could have fleshed out the interior some more, but it was more of a demo scene for Eclipse Studio Paint, so I didn't get into the nitty gritty with this one. And speaking of, if you haven't, definitely check out the Clip Studio Paint video where we will use the image as a panorama backdrop. Links in the description and pinned comment below. This video turned out way longer than I intended. I showed Omar John my script and he went, oh my god, are you telling them your life story? Sorry for being absent for so long. It'll probably be a little while until our next one, but starting July, I'll be spacing out client work a lot more and we'll dedicate way more time to doing polycosm videos, which I've honestly missed so much. Anyway, hope you liked this video and thanks for watching guys. Bye.